Lesson 5.3, Word Problem Solving, Common Factors. We can use the Make a List strategy to solve problems with common factors. We make a list of factors for each number, then identify the factor or factors that are found on both lists. We can find the common factors for 16 and 18. We think, well, 16 is 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. So the factors are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Notice we only listed the 4 once in the list. For 18, we have 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. So our factors are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And we can circle the ones they have in common. They both have a 1 in the list and they both have a 2 in the list. But that's the only thing I see that they have in common is the 1 and the 2. So 16 and 18 have the factors 1 and 2 in common. Those are the common factors. A common factor is a factor of two or more numbers. So we might even have three or four numbers that we're trying to make lists of all their factors and finding what they have in common. A perfect number is a number that is equal to the sum of its factors, except itself as an add-in. We don't use itself. So for 6, our factors are 1 times 6, so we have a 1 and 6, and a 2 times 3, so we have a 2 and a 3. But we can't use the 6 itself, okay? It can't be used itself as an add-in. We add the 1, 2, and 3 factors, and that does equal 6, so 6 would be considered a perfect number. And we'll talk about this more in a few minutes. Emma has a coin collection of 32 nickels, 24 dimes, and 20 quarters. She wants to arrange the coins into rows. In each row, we'll have the same number of coins and all the coins in each row will be the same. How many coins can she put in each row? So sometimes when we have word problems like this, we might have to read it a second time to completely understand what it's asking of us. We know she's got 32 nickels, 24 dimes, and 20 quarters, but it says she wants to put them into rows that have the same number of coins in each row, and each row will have the same type of coin. So we need to find a factor that 32, 24, and 20 have in common to make equal rows of coins that are alike. We can make a list of factors for 32, 24, and 20 and identify which factors are common to all three numbers. We make a list of all the factors of 32. We have 1 times 32, 2 times 16, and 4 times 8. So here's our factors. Same for 24, we can do 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. So here's all the factors for 24. And we can list all the factors for 20. So they have the common factors of 1, 2, and 4. Since 32, 24, and 20 have the common factors of 1, 2, and 4, Emma can put her coins into rows of 1, 2, or 4. If she put them into rows of 4, that would be 8 times 4. She'd have 8 rows of 4. That's 32. And with rows of 4, 6 times 4 is equal to 24. So there would be 6 rows of the dimes. And there would be 5 rows of the quarters because 5 times 4 is equal to 20. So we can also make a quick drawing or use models to rearrange circles or coins to put them into equal rows of coins that are alike. By making a list, we can see all the factors of each number. Then we can circle the common factors. Find the common factors for 6, 8, and 10. Well, 6 has 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. 8 has 1 times 8 and 2 times 4 and 10 has 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. We can circle the factors they have in common. There's a 1. There's also a 2. So the common factors are 1 and 2. 
if a number is a factor of another number, then the factors of that number are also factors of that number. Now that sounds confusing. Let's try this again. If 6 is a factor of 12, which it is, and 2 and 3 are factors of 6, then 2 and 3 are factors of 12. These are factors of 6, and 6 is a factor of 12, so these are also factors of 12. See? Factors of factors are also factors. We can write the factor pairs to make sure we list all the factors for a number. Find the common factors for 27 and 36. Well, 27 is 1 times 27 and 3 times 9, so our factors are 1, 3, 9, and 27. For 36, we have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 6 times 6. So here's our factor pairs and our list of factors. Remember, when we have a double like this, we're just going to list it once. We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. We look at this list of factors and this list of factors, and we figure out what they have in common. Both lists have a 1, both lists have a 3, and both lists have a 9. So the common factors for 27 and 36 are 1, 3, and 9. Mrs. Kim baked cookies and needs to put an equal amount of one type in each box. She baked 24 oatmeal, 48 shortbread, and 56 chocolate chip cookies. What is the greatest amount of cookies that Mrs. Kim can put in each box? So, we need to find common factors for 24, 48, and 56, then choose the greatest factor. That will be the number of cookies that she'll put in each box. And the factors of 24, we have 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. So here's our list of factors for 24. For 48, we have 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, and 6 times 8. So here's our list of factors for 48. For 56, we have 1 times 56, 2 times 28, 4 times 14, and 7 times 8. We look at the list and we circle the common factors, but remember, we need the greatest factor. And maybe the factors of 24 and 48 might have a 3 and a 6 and a 12 and a 24 in common, but because it's not on the list for 56, we can't use them. It has to be common for all three numbers. And we see the common factor that is the greatest is 8. That means Mrs. Kim can put 8 cookies in each box and she'll have the same type of cookies in each box. So let's use some higher order thinking skills. One common factor of two numbers is 20. Another common factor is 10. That means two numbers have a common factor of 20 and 10. If both numbers are less than 50, what are the two numbers? So we think, well, the two numbers are products with 10 and 20 as factors that they have in common. So what could the numbers be? We start multiplying each factor by 1, then 2, then 3, and so on to see what products we get. Well, we have a 20 and a 10. 1 times 20 is 20. 2 times 20 is equal to 40. But when we get to 3 times 20, that's equal to 60. And it says it's less than 50, so we can't use that one. So we have a 20 and a 40. When we multiply 1 times 10, we get 10. 2 times 10 is 20. 3 times 10 is 30. 4 times 10 is 40. When we multiply 5 times 10, we get to 50. And it has to be less than 50, so we can't use 5 times 10 is equal to 50. When we look at the products, 
20 and 40, and we see that this has a 20 and a 40. The two numbers that have the common factors 10 and 20 are 20 and 40. The factors for 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. And the factors for 40 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, and 40. So it works. 20 and 40 have a 10 and 20 as common factors. At the beginning of this lesson, we were introduced to perfect numbers. A number is a perfect number if it equals the sum of its factors except itself as an addend. So we learned that 6 had the factors 1, 2, 3, and 6, and it can't have itself as an addend. So we don't use the 6. We add the factors 1, 2, and 3. It is equal to 6, so 6 is a perfect number. So is 8 a perfect number? We get, we take 8 and we list its factors, 1 times 8, 2 times 4, so we have a 1, 2, 4, and 8. We know we can't use itself as an add-in, so we can't use the 8. That leaves us with a 1, 2, and 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 more is 7. So these factors, when we total them and get a sum, we get a 7. It's supposed to equal that number if it's a perfect number. So no, 8 is not a perfect number because when we get rid of the 8 as an add-in and then add the other factors, we get a 7. But we can find perfect numbers by listing a number's factors, then adding them to see if they equal that number. But remember, we don't include the number itself as one of the add-ins, okay? Earlier, we did the problem where Mrs. Kim baked cookies and needed to put an equal amount of one type in each box. And we saw she made 56 chocolate chip cookies. She put eight cookies each into boxes. How many boxes did she use? So we think we need to divide 56 by those eight cookies. If we have the multiplication facts memorized, we know that eight times seven is equal to 56. So 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7 boxes. That's an inverse operation, isn't it? Multiplication to division. So can Mrs. Kim put the 56 cookies into 14 boxes? So we list the factors of 56 to see if 14 is a factor. We have the list of factors for 56. And we see that 14 is a factor. 56 divided by 4 is equal to 14, so that would be 14 boxes, so yes, it would work. Instead of putting 8 into 7 boxes, she would put 4 into 14 boxes. And remember that if a number is a factor of another number, then the factors of that number are also factors of the number? Our crazy confusing statement? So look. We know before, earlier in the lesson, that she had 56 chocolate chip cookies. She put eight in each box. So now we know she used seven boxes. We also now know that 14 and four are factors of 56. So she could have 56 cookies with four in each box and use 14 boxes. Well, because this seven is a factor of 56 and seven is a factor of 14, 14 is a factor of 56. The factor of a factor will also be a factor. Look at it this way, eight is a factor of 56, and four is a factor of eight, so four is also a factor of 56. If this number is a factor of that number, and this number is a factor of that number, then this number is also a factor of that one. I know it can seem confusing. If you have to rewind and watch that again, that's okay. It could be very confusing. If you got it, well, great. So remember when you're trying to find common factors, just make a list of all the factors for those numbers and circle the ones that they have in common. Our next lesson, 
5.4 is going to be about factors and multiples and how they're related. Remember to try to be a better person than you were yesterday. Have a great day. Bye.